I'm delighted to welcome you to the first episode of Women with AI, which we've launched on International Women's Day 2024. And I'm very excited to be welcoming our first guest. But before we start the podcast, let me tell you a little bit about her. Our guest today is the one and only Sophia Matviva. Sophia is the CEO and founder of Tech for Non-Techies, an executive education and consulting company. She has contributed to the Harvard Business Review, Financial Times, The Guardian and Forbes on entrepreneurship and technology and hosts the top rated Tech for Non-Techies podcast. So I'm sure I'm going to be safe in her hands today. She has also guest lectured at the University of Chicago, the London Business School and Oxford University. She is a startup mentor at the Chicago Booth Polsky Center of Entrepreneurship and has advised leading accelerators, including Chicago Booth's New Venture Challenge and the Techstars Blackstone Launchpad. She holds an MBA from Chicago Booth and a BSc Honours in Politics from Bristol. She speaks English, Russian and French. And Sophia also sits on the advisory board to Riveter, which uses AI to predict customer trends for the world's biggest brand. So Sophia Matviva, welcome to Women with AI. Joe, I'm so happy to be here and I'm really excited about the day that this is coming out on International Women's Day. And, you know, as the AI revolution is spreading, I think the conversation and Mm -hmm. the show that you are creating is going to be so important because if we are not careful, um, you know, the inequalities that are so prevalent in the tech industry, they're just going Mm -hmm. to be scaled with AI, which no, we don't exactly. want. Thank you. That's perfect because this podcast is dedicated to amplifying the voices and perspectives of the women in the field of artificial intelligence. So let's start with the basics. I'm sure our audience probably know a lot more about AI than I do, but as the host of Tech for Non-Techies and you're speaking to a non-tech person, what is AI? So the way I like to think about it is it's basically Look. machines doing things that we could have done before or that we we could still do so really simple things you could give a machine instructions um to book you a table this is literally what open table software does so i need a table for two people at 7 p.m in central london and then there is an algorithm which helps you make that reservation so previously what did we do before open table existed we would yeah pick up the phone, we would make a bunch of phone calls, maybe we would have a secretary if we were really fancy to go and do that. So you see, it's a simple task that is automated that, you know, machines can now do. So that's simple AI. And then when we get into generative AI, it's basically when AI can make things. (laughs) So can AI make new new information? So with this open table, there is no new stuff that it's making it's literally just completing a task for you whereas generative ai is basically taking data that already exists and then changing it into something new and generating a new text for example does that make sense sense. and it's it's to save time really isn't it i think that was probably the first reason well not the first reason but that's the main thing that it does it it sort of frees up time yeah well to save yeah yeah, to save time and for a business, um, that means time time yeah. is money, right? To save, to save time and to save money and also right. scale. So in general, I like to think of technology as allowing us to yeah. save time, to save money, to be more efficient and to be more secure. So generally, those are the, the four things that technology allows us to do. So not every yeah. single one, not every single technology is going to be able to do all four. But so, for example, you and I currently, we are in different parts of yeah. London right now. And people are going to hear this podcast all around the world. So essentially, our wisdom is being amplified by technology. So we're yeah. being scaled. And it's also, you know, being done at an efficient mm-hmm. way. So we don't have to get a room together, get everybody flights to come and see us. It's, you know, people can listen to us. So we're scaling geographically, but also it's efficient because essentially everybody can stay at home and carry on, I don't know, doing the dishes or whatever they're doing when they're listening to us. And so software, whether it's AI or whether it's just, you know, a normal algorithm, essentially it's scalability, efficiency, cost, and um, security. Those Those are the things that it gives us. And that's why businesses are so excited about it. 
Because essentially, it allows businesses, if used properly, to increase profits. Yeah, which is you know, as a businesswoman, something I'm always interested yeah, in. Definitely. So, how how do you use AI in your daily life? You know, I think so. I'll tell you how I use AI Pardon? consciously, because all of us use AI yeah. unconsciously. I don't think right? we realize how many devices so, we all have. Like, I have a slightly unhealthy TikTok like, I use habit. Siri, I use Alexa. <laughs> so that's me using AI unconsciously because TikTok keeps on feeding me videos that keep me stuck to TikTok as opposed to, you know, reading research papers on AI, which is what I should be doing. <laughs> So that there's a lot of unconscious use of AI that we all that we all do, uh, but some of the conscious things, especially for people who have any kind of content creation, AI is absolutely fantastic. But you've got to be careful here, because for example, as I mentioned, I have the Tech for No Techies podcast, and some of our interviews, our video interviews, so they go onto YouTube. So previously, what we would do before AI is that my social media assistant would literally cut clips. So find the most interesting bits, cut tiny clips, and then put those tiny clips on TikTok or on Instagram or on LinkedIn for people to watch. And obviously, that took my assistant time, and that's time yeah. that I have to pay for. Now we have an AI tool called Video AI, where we literally just put in the clip, it finds the bits that it somehow decides are interesting and then it clips them into tiny reels which then go up into social media so what i want people to see here is that yes it's ai and yes it definitely helps and it takes the content that we already have and it scales it but where i am not using ai is i am not using say chat gpt4 to create content and then to pass it off as my own and I think this is where the debate is, is essentially, can you just get chat GPT as, you know, somebody who's a content creator or like if you want to be a thought leader, like can you have really interesting, intelligent content created and then can you pitch it as an article to the Financial Times and get it published? <laughs> so right now, that is not the case. Funny. So right now, I definitely do use chat GPT to get ideas, to kind of debate, to like, you know, sometimes you're staring at a blank piece of paper and you're thinking, I've got to write something really smart and there's nothing happening in yes, my head right definitely. now. Definitely. <laughs> and I think, sorry, my, and, it kept freezing, but I've caught up now. Yeah. We can cut that bit out. <laughs> but that's how I use ChatGPT as well. I use it to get ideas because it, it's like, it's given you the basics that then you can work off. So that's how it saves time for me. But I was just checking that you could hear me or oh, I hadn't frozen sorry <laughs> on Riverside sometimes there is a delay just because of all the things that actually the AI is doing in the background um but you know one of my clients she actually is a professor of AI at Texas A&M University which is one of the top universities in the US uh, and the top in yeah. Texas and you know the Texans think that they're basically well, that they're, they're a law unto themselves. <laughs> anyway, so uh, she's a professor of AI that I actually interviewed on my podcast. And she says that she sees ChatGPT as well, her intern. So clever, very keen, you know, that kind of like kind of Hermione from yes. Harry Potter. Really keen, has read everything, oh, yeah. but has no actual life experience. Yes. <laughs> and so really sweet but you probably shouldn't pass Hermione's work off as your own, at least when she's a 13-year-old. <laughs> Agreed. Right? <laughs> so useful for, for research, take what Hermione is giving you, but then as a senior person with experience, you know nuance. You know what's really happening right. in the industry. But it's really helpful to have something mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. essentially critique it because mm -hmm. often... I'll ask ChatGPT something and then it will give me an answer and I'll yeah. think, oh, this is wrong. This is yeah. completely incomplete. This is this is missing a cool crucial point. And then I basically uh -huh. start writing something original yes. and interesting as a response to the incomplete For, thing that I yeah, get. Yeah, completely. Does that make so sense? I think AI is making us more creative in a way. Would you agree? That, is that how you see it? It's making yeah. us... So if you use right. it properly... Because if you 
But like, I remember we had, when it first came out, and you know, my social media assistant, yeah. he's quite young, very keen, so yeah. kind of kind of like Hermione, very keen, quite young, not yet hugely experienced. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm writing all of these newsletters, you know, as, as you said, I've written for the Harvard Business Review, so how about we take the content that I've created and essentially ask ChatGPT to create some social media posts based on what I've said. And so we tried that and it was a disaster. Um, because I was like, I have original thought there and literally all yeah. originality has just been squeezed out <laughs> and has just become, you know, generic inspirational yeah. business stuff, which is really, yeah. really boring. And if we had just posted that, like I would have been thoroughly ashamed <laughs> because you can tell, but essentially we looked at it and, and we're like, okay, no, this is not mm -hmm. enough, but we know where it's not enough. And so we yeah. can change it. And I think AI makes you more creative when you yeah. respond to it. When you decide that, okay, this is not enough. This is where I can, this is where my human creativity is going to yeah. matter. Whereas I think some people mistakenly think, oh, I'm just going to, you know, ask it something and then I'm going to post it and then yeah. good things will happen. And most of the time, that's not going to work. And most of the time, yeah, people I can agree. Tell. And especially being based in the UK, it always has an American spelling or an American voice, even if you tell it that Is you're it? in the UK or that it's for, for that audience. And that's the, the, well, not the problem, but the issue is that it doesn't know the nuances of your own audience and what you want to say. So, yeah, I mean, do you see that it's taking sort of potentially it's freeing up time and it's handling those junior roles and those junior tasks. I mean, do you think that is of special uh, sort of significance for women sort of in this industry? You know, is it sort of those roles that women would normally take that are now maybe at risk if it's sort of the junior interns? I mean, you said your social media intern was a, a male, so clearly not. It was probably going to affect everyone. But yeah, what do you think the risks are? Well, so... <laughs> There are risks unless you take the future into your own hands, basically. So I can literally talk about my social media system. Um, he has become more productive because he has learned how to use AI tools. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff I need him to do. Like if I possibly could get him to be awake and working for me 24-7, that would be amazing. <laughs> But, you know, apparently he has human rights and needs to sleep, well, so we're doesn't. not allowed to do that. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so, you know, my to-do list for him is, is as long as my arm. But with AI, that means that, for example, he's not sitting there and mm -hmm. trimming videos. <laughs> he gets the AI to trim the videos and, you know, about 60% of the results that he gets are good. So he throws out the other 40 and then he uses AI to find the right times to post things, which means that he can then be creative and then I can say to him, okay, you know, I am looking. So one of the things that we are now doing is we're working more and more with law firms. So when law firms want to work with tech clients, that's a really perfect client for us because they're a non-technical audience. They don't need to become a technical audience, but they need to understand technology so they can serve their clients better. And so I can say to him, look, this is the audience that I need. Can you go and find, you know, places where I can write an op-ed or, or podcasts that lawyers listen to and so on. Okay. And so that means that he is more productive because he's learned to use these tools. However, if people that, you know, if, if I wasn't his boss, and I, and if I didn't have essentially knowledge of AI and knowledge of creativity, and also if I wasn't mm. entrepreneurial, then I would think, well, okay, well, you can't do this. So this yeah. job is eliminated. So there's a, a really great phrase that I heard from a Harvard Business yeah. School professor, Karim Lakhani, who said that it's not AI that's going to take jobs. It's humans who know how yes. to use AI who like, are going to take jobs. Yeah. And I think... Mm. This is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, this is it. Mm -hmm. And like, we're now at this point where we can decide. It's up to yeah. us. We can decide. Is AI going to make me yeah. more productive? Because mm -hmm, can mm -hmm, I then mm -hmm, go and say to an employee, mm -hmm, look, mm -hmm. I can do all of these tasks and I can do all of these tasks basically with the, the, the same <laughs> amount of time. Like you're hiring 
one person who can really do the task of three. So you can do that or you can think, okay, well, my job is being eliminated. That's it. So it's spotting those opportunities. It's up to us. Completely. And, you know, this is International Women's Day. So, and I think that we need to be looking at AI as an empowerment tool for women. And so I think we need to encourage more women to, to get into this field, to learn how to use it. And how do you see the best ways to do that? You know, so unfortunately, have you heard that term office housework? No. <laughs> so, um, so it's like, you know, when you're in an office and there's just like mm-hmm. it's somebody's birthday and yeah. then a cake yeah. needs to be organized or like somebody's leaving and yeah. then a card needs to be bought and a gift. So usually it's the women that are yeah. tasked okay. with these things. So, I mean, it would make sense that, you know, the office manager or the okay. secretary is going to do that. Um, because that's kind of, you know, if it's a team secretary and somebody yeah. in the team is leaving, yeah. that makes sense. But even when it's actually not, you know, let's say that there are male mm-hmm. partners and female partners in sure. a marketing firm. Generally, this kind of office housework, this yeah. drudgery, <laughs> falls yeah. onto women. And, you know, there are all sorts of reasons why that happens. And Pardon. it's crap. And it happens. And so, you know, ladies, yeah. when you're listening to this, Think about all the yeah, cakes all that, the you bought, you all bought. cards that you bought, all those cards that you bought, all that, me- and like remembering, like remembering when it's somebody's birthday, babies, all of that stuff, all of that brain yeah. capacity, right? And yeah. you are not going to get promoted and you're the- not going to get paid more because you went to M&S and bought the yeah, cake. Yeah, totally agree. And yet, so you're not going to get promoted for it. You're not going to get paid more, but yet you were doing it. (laughs) Yeah. And like, it, it sucks. Right. And, and so women in general are tasks, are tasked with these, you know, drudge, bits of, bits of office drudgery. And we can't use AI to do everything, but AI is going to allow us to eliminate at least some of that drudgery. I mean, we still can't have like robot <laughs> cake deliveries. Well, you can but, in some places. <laughs> at, actually, yes, you can. Yeah. Um, so at least some of the, <laughs> that drudgery. And because women in particular tend to be given more of the admin, even when they are yeah. super senior, I think the way we fight that is, you know, we fight that by saying, no, why am um, I doing this? And I've literally, I remember I was working at a company and we were in a meeting room and there was a guy who was more junior than me and I was asked oh, to go and get the printouts yeah. and give them to everybody. And I said, well, why doesn't, why doesn't yeah. he go and yeah. do it? And literally I was told, oh, you know, Sophia, don't go, don't, oh, don't make a fuss. Oh, that's, yeah. And awful. And, um, I literally just, thought, well, I mean, <laughs> I can, can feel, feel the, it I know, your I feel bones, anger right? inside just on your behalf that that even happened and it. But it does. Yeah. But, mm. you know, it's this this kind of like everyday sexism happens to all of us, right? And so on one hand, yeah. we do need to try to stand up for ourselves when we can. But mm-hmm. also, frankly, sometimes it's not politically expedient. Mm. And this is, I hate saying that, sure. but sometimes it's true. So we need we need to stand up when we yeah. can. But other times when actually, you know what, like, I'm not going to go and spend my political capital on fighting Mm -hmm. this. I can just get AI to do whatever this nonsense is. So I can spend the rest of my time actually doing strategic stuff, strategic work that wins the account and that gets me paid more. So I think, you know, I'd love to say that, yes, let's all go and, you know, (laughs) fight. But sometimes, like it's 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 unrealistic to say that we can fight every single injustice, and also still, you know, get on the accounts that yeah. we want, get the clients that we want, and get the promotions that we want. Um, yeah. And you know, as an aside, mm-hmm. there is this mm-hmm. audio book mm-hmm. that I listened to, which I really loved. Uh-huh. It's called Machiavelli for Women. Oh, <laughs> I, I, we can it's like how oh. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's nothing to do with AI, but it's just, you know, the reality of, okay, what's it like to be a woman in the workspace? You, you can't, you can't openly fight every injustice, but you can be smart about it. Right. 
Yeah. And I think, I think that's the thing because women are great at multitasking. And I think maybe that's one of the things that you can use AI for as well, because it can be doing lots of different things or you're using lots of different tools to do things. Do you think AI, do you see it as being more female or male or is, does that not matter? No. Did you lose me? Oh, you, we had a, we had a bit of a, a bit of a laugh. Bit of... Could you say that again? Yeah. I said, um, what did I say? I said that women are great, women are great at multitasking and we can do lots of things at once. And I think that's what AI is good for because you can have either lots of different tools running or you're using it to do lots of things or it's freeing up time so you can do more things. Do you think AI is viewed as being female or male or does it not matter? Or is it how, is it who's interacting? So I actually, um, so it's interesting because a lot of the time AI tools are created mm. to be female. So if you look yeah. at Alexa, Alexa, Siri, all of them, they have female yeah. voices, which yeah. is interesting because, you know, we are, we are socialized to believe that giving commands to mm -hmm. a woman is fine. Yeah. Like giving, giving our orders yeah. to a woman is yeah. okay. Whereas if it was a man, like, oh, no, we can't give orders yeah. to a man. I do, I actually do think that there are some pretty yeah. dark things in gender socializations in terms of AI, which, you know, we need to question, especially, I would say, for those yes. who have children, um, because we don't yeah. notice it. You know, like, I didn't notice the whole, like, that own, that AI voices mm -hmm. tend to be female and that way until somebody said that to me and I was like, oh. That's really true. And I would say that to people who have children, when you have, say, Alexa at your house, you are right. unconsciously programming kids to think that barking orders at a woman yeah. is fine. Yeah. And I mean, we, we all kind of fall for this socialization. So I just, and I mean, I certainly do too. So right. I'll just say, just try to be as conscious and aware of it as yeah. possible. And, um, in terms of, I think, what women can do to participate in the AI conversation is, A, well, just okay. use the thing, uh, use use as yeah. much as possible. But also, if something is rubbish and it doesn't work, then question why it doesn't. So if, for example, you work in an organization that maybe makes an AI tool, you know, going back to law firms, Lots of law firms, especially the big law firms, you know, Magic Circle, the huge international law firms, they are using all of their case history to make their own yeah. AI tools. And, and so you can actually influence, you can actually say like, okay, I'm getting really terrible yeah. results in, in this. Why is that? And I think that confidence to just, you know, to say and to speak up and to say... <laughs> This isn't working for me. This for me. needs to be fixed. I th this is this is the one takeaway mm -hmm. that I would I would want women to to have from this conversation is that these are not fixed things. A lot of the time they are created by men who don't have the problems that we do, who don't face the issues that we do. Yeah. And so often they would program things into the AI that um, we had that you know, that definitely don't work for us, but they didn't, they didn't do it maliciously. They just yeah. don't know. And it's like, do you know the story of when the Apple watch was first no. released? No, Did and I'm wearing one now. Well? So now okay. I feel bad that I don't know. <laughs> so. uh, oh no. So this was ages ago. This was so, I think I did an episode on it. I don't <laughs> remember. Anyway, so this was ages ago when it was first released. So, you know, all these Apple engineers who you know, paid a fortune got up to unveil the Apple Watch, and it was yeah. a bunch of guys, and they were saying, oh, you know, it tracks all mm -hmm. of your metrics, uh, and even, you know, your heart rate, how much you've walked, and even tracks how much beer you drank, and it's like, oh, yay, yay, great. And then somebody in the audience, who happened to be female, said, and does it track mm -hmm. the menstrual cycle? Yeah. And they were like, oh, no, didn't, didn't think of that, <laughs> but it tracks everything. Yeah. It tracks everything <laughs> apart from this thing that happens every month to 50% oh, like, of the population. Know, ridiculous, because I, I do use it for that as well. <laughs> but the hilarious, uh, someone at work, he said he'd got his Apple Watch. And he said, oh, it does cycle tracking. And he literally thought it was to sack his bicycle rides into work. 
<laughs> I was like, no, it's not that kind of cycle. <laughs> But, yeah, you don't you don't have one of these, no. honey. But it's, it's the same with everything. You know, uh, the crash test dummies, for example, every all the statistics, mm-hmm. everything, all the accidents, the seat, the way the seat belts are designed, everything has always been for men. And I think it was only yeah, yeah the default is male. Been, and I, I don't even know if it was the 1990s. I think it might have been the early 2000s. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that they actually thought, oh, maybe we should see how it affects a woman's body if she's wearing a seat belt. Is it? Yeah, and as a result, more women have died yeah. in car crashes. And so what I would say to women yeah. is that this happens at very Sorry. large companies which hire apparently the best people in the world and pay them a ton of cash. And they make these, excuse me, but yeah. kindergarten blunders. You know, they, they make these idiotic yeah. mistakes and they are still making them. And so what I would say is that if you are using a tool and you just see some obvious stupidity, don't dismiss it. I think we as women, we often tend to think, oh, you know, I'm probably doing something wrong. Oh, I didn't use it properly. Yeah, like it's it's my fault. We think, oh, there's something that I did that I don't understand and it's my fault. Well, actually... A lot of the time it isn't. A lot of the time it just yeah. wasn't oh. made for you. And it should be because if you're using it, clearly exactly. you're a target And that's user. why we need our right. seat at the table because we do make up 50% of the population. So, uh, well, yeah. Well, more now. <laughs> I mean, because you've built <laughs> AI, haven't you? And so you don't even need to yeah. be yeah. a completely techie person. So can you, can you t- yeah, tell us Absolutely about that? Absolutely not. So, um, you know, it's... Interesting. So when, if I had known that I was going to build an AI algorithm before I started doing it, I would have freaked out. Um, but I kind of didn't know that this is what I was doing. Only I only realized what I was doing wow. when it was already happening. So I'll tell you what happened. Um, so my first tech company was a retail <laughs> tech business. So we had a consumer app where women would take photos of what they wanted to wear or buy and ask professional stylists for their feedback. Mm. Like, should I wear should I mm. wear this skirt with this dress? Or should I buy this even though, you know, it's the wrong color, yeah. but it's 80% off? Oh, we're tempting. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, oh, yeah. it's lime green and it's two sizes too small, but it's Dolce & Gabbana and it's 80% off. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we've all been there, right? And so... So there was the consumer bit, and mm-hmm. then that would allow us to see what people were, were buying or not buying and then sell mm-hmm. that data analyzed to mm-hmm. retailers yeah. and to brands. And um, we needed to create, we needed to decide how people who would download our app, you know, you could also see what other people were wearing or what, what other people were buying, you know, there was a content feed. And some people had friends in the app, but it wasn't an Instagram type thing. It was like most most people didn't know anybody else in the app, but some people did. And so we kept on trying to figure out, okay, how do we serve content to people in a way that they find interesting, but is but also isn't just showing them exactly the same people because that's boring. And and so I remember I was having a conversation with my CTO, and we're like, well. Okay, so what do we prioritize that people see? Do we prioritize that people see their friends? Do we prioritize that people see the people who have voted the most stylish consistently? Do we prioritize that people see the new users? Because, you know, like fresh blood. And we were having this discussion and he said something like, well, you know, why don't we just vary it? And so we literally got a piece of paper and we're like, okay, so if we have friend followed by new person, followed by like most yeah. stylish like what do and then we kind of just have this variation yeah. just like this like and the, so the most important people are friends and then the the least important people are mm-hmm. kind of the most stylish We're like well we don't know let's <laughs> use this logic let's release it and and see yeah. what happens and then as i really as i realized later he was like oh, okay so this is basically the new content algorithm <laughs> prototype Let's release this prototype and A/B test it. And I was like, "Oh my god, I have just, <laughs> I've, I've just done that. really <laughs> easy as that." Well, not even. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> and you see, what I just 
the things that I just We're explained gonna... to you, everybody could yeah. follow it, right? And you could also see that you I like I didn't know the answer. There is no right answer. Because, you know, some of our friends are really stylish yeah. and I want to see what they're wearing. Other people, I'm like, I love you, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not wearing but no. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you, but not because yeah. of, you know, <laughs> what you wear. And and so you make these assumptions. Well, and then what an engineer does is they they work with you to help you understand the assumptions that you're making. So brilliant. you can really kind of put those assumptions basically into a bunch of mathematical equations. Yep. And then those mathematical equations yep. become code. And then, you know, you serve the algorithm, you serve that content, and then you see, okay, are people are engaging more or are people engaging less? And then you see, okay, people are really interested in this kind of thing. They're really not interested in this kind of thing. And then you alter it. And I think, you know, this is a really great example for a podcast that's going to be listened yeah. to primarily by women because yeah. nothing that I just said is particularly technical. Yeah. And nothing that I just said is something that, you know, you can't yeah. do because it's just yeah. logic. Like if you are capable of, you know, go yeah. having a job, <laughs> you're capable of yeah. logic. And so then you're capable of questioning yeah. the algorithm and you're capable of essentially saying what data has gone into making yeah. this algorithm. Um, are there, is that equal amount of data mm -hmm. of men and women, yeah. for example? You could mm -hmm. ask, um, okay, is, is this algorithm producing past mm -hmm. data? Because this is important because right now in our world, we live in a very unequal yeah. society. You know, um, in the UK, female founders only get 2% of no. venture capital funding. The gender pay gap yeah. is enormous. <laughs> you know, there's, so that. like we right now live in a society that is getting better, but phenomenally yeah. slowly. So if we but, have an algorithm that basically takes what we have and says, oh, let's carry on doing that, I'm no, not on we board. We need to make the change. I don't. Yeah. And so we can literally say, is is this algorithm using past data and just extrapolating it to the future? And then and then if they say yes, you can think, well, is this what we want? Or do we essentially want to program the future that we want? Because sometimes yeah. we do. So there are there are many opportunities for women. This you've made me really excited about about this journey that I'm starting as well and hopefully our audience is going to come with us just to learn more about AI and how we can empower women to use it and how it impacts on us and how we can be part of, of, of changing it and making it better for all of us. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the main thing is just don't put yeah. anybody on a pedestal. I think we have this um, tendency to put, you know, somebody who's like an AI engineer mm -hmm. onto a pedestal and they're probably really good at what they do, but they don't yeah. have your perspective and they yeah. need your perspective. So, you know, they might be as terrified of you oh, as yeah. you are of them. So offer them your perspective, you know, kindly and politely, but offer them your perspective because they'll probably yeah. benefit from and it. A, yeah. They may be the experts in building it, but they need the input. And it's only ever going to be as good as the people that have input the data or input the thought into where it's going. Exactly. But thank you. Sophia, I mean, where can our audience learn more about this? Have you got any recommendations for podcasts or books or people to listen to? Um, so obviously, yeah, the Tech Fun and definitely. Techies podcast. The link will be in the so, show notes. Uh, yeah, listen, listen to the Tech Fun and Techies podcast and follow me on LinkedIn. So I put up lots of stuff on AI, but also on technology in general on there. And there is a, there is a book um, oh. called Competing okay. in the Age of AI. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to make sure that I get uh, the proper, the full name of it. It's Competing in the Age of AI. Um, yeah, Competing in the Age of AI, Strategy and Leadership when Algorithms and Networks Run the World. So it's, it's quite a thick read, so you're not going to want to have it on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I actually, I interviewed one of the authors and I did a book summary on my podcast, if you can't be bothered to read the whole book. But the book 
is really, really good because it's written by two Harvard Business School professors and it's about AI, but from a business perspective. So yes, it teaches you basically what algorithms are, but it's not a computer science text. So Mm -hmm. yes, like, you know, I've read it with a highlighter and lots of post-its, but definitely as a non-technical yeah. person with a business background, you will be able to Brilliant. understand it. That's fantastic. Thank you. And you mentioned people can find you on LinkedIn, so we'll put some links uh, up and all your, your tags in the show notes. But thank you for coming on Women With AI. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I've learned a lot. So thank you. I loved it. And Everybody listen to this. Happy International, yeah, happy Women's, International Day. Women's Day. Thank you, Joe. Oh, why why frozen again? Still <laughs> content. Okay, good. So apologies if I spoke over you or just <laughs> sat there silent. <laughs> Oh no that that happens that happens with Riverside. Don't worry about oh, it. But no, thank you. Okay, so yeah, awesome. Well, this was great. Well done, Joe.